Hello, dobro dan. English, molim ingleski. Okay, okay, I'll come get it right now. Oh, big. <laughs> It was so beautiful out this morning, and now it's raining cats and dogs. I always get excited when a new package arrives. So just over a year ago, in the fall of 2019, I was in Portugal for two weeks. You know, going to Portugal is always special, but last year it was it was really a magical couple of weeks. I started in the Duro for the Duro Boys auction, uh, then moved on to the Dao by Rada, uh, El Antejo, and then ended up in Lisbon. In Lisbon, one of my friends, Andre Riberino, took me to this tiny wine bar called Black Sheep Lisboa, owned by an American couple. It's just a tiny wine bar in Lisbon. It kind of reminded me of kind of the, the old sitcom Cheers. Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name. When you go in really homely feeling, seemed like the owners knew all the customers coming in. And that evening was my most memorable wine bar and maybe even bar night of my life. During the course of an evening, it was just, there were just so many different people coming in and out. A group of Canadians that were living in France, a, a group of American winemakers, a retired British man that lived around the corner, a Portuguese filmmaker. One of the owners, Brian Patterson, told me, you know, this is the, these kind of nights are the reason why I wanted to start the wine bar. And if I, I could design the perfect night, this was it. I, I closed down the bar with the owners and we went next door to this, this kind of dance club. So it was just older senior citizens all dressed up, dancing, having, having a good time. Me, the owners, and then one of their customers, or was this, was this Dutch woman, and I ended up staying there till about 4 a.m. hearing uh, her story about her love life, which was, <laughs> which was crazy. So the owners of Black Sheep Lisboa have started a wine uh, distribution company called Real Portuguese Wine. They focus on minimal intervention, kind of natural Portuguese wines that are difficult to find anywhere else. And just before we get into the video, you, you guys have to know that we are affiliates uh, of this kind of, you know, this wine distribution company. We'll, you'll see a link, you can get 10% off in the description box. So I think this is a really valuable category, and let me tell you why. You know, natural wines are really trendy at the moment. Well, <laughs> before COVID and everything went down, there were all the rage and all these hipster bars around the world. But with that came, the prices started to rise quite a bit. What the cool thing about Portugal is the wines are very fairly priced, especially when it comes to minimal, minimal intervention wines, orange wines. So Brian and Jen of Real Portuguese Wine have set some wines for us to taste. I'm going to bring in the toughest of palate I know. I'm tolerant of uh, these minimal intervention wines that can have sometimes some off aromas. Let's see what this tough palate says. Okay, once again, brought in the big guns, the tough palate here. So, uh, tell me about what, what your impressions are of minimal intervention Portuguese wine. I don't have a lot of experience with it, to be honest. I mean, I've tasted a handful here and there, and I have a really good impression of the wines that I tasted, because I think one thing that's really interesting is um, all of the Portuguese natural wine I tasted, they're all made from local varieties, and you know they have plenty of local varieties, so you really got to experience different flavors. Um, one thing in particular that was quite consistent for me was I find that acidity is often quite vibrant in the Portuguese natural wines that I tasted. And maybe I was lucky, but I have not tasted a faulty uh, natural wine as well. I mean, sure, you have your usual like volatile acidity and all that kind of thing, but it was not too much for me to not be able to accept it. And you know how I'm actually really sensitive to to that kind of things. So I'm hoping that these don't disappoint here. So yeah. before we get to the ones choosing, uh, the ones that you chose that we're gonna taste today, you wanna to talk about this one, the Antonio de Madeira Branco, we have Madeira, uh, Madeira, I think in Portuguese, uh, you have experience with this old vines, uh, French guy with Portuguese roots, moving back to Portugal, old vine blend. We actually first tasted it in early 2019 in Singapore, and it was over dinner with a friend, and so we're having Chinese food, which was pretty rich, salty, a little bit spicy, and this one went really well with it. And we we had it um, yesterday as well. It's really citrus driven, but I think what's really exciting is that that mouthfeel. You still have a little bit of this creaminess, fullness in the mouth, but at the same time, it's got a very nice, um, approachable and friendly aroma. 
It's just a, a wine that I think you can literally offer to any wine lovers. Uh, if they are open to orange wine, they would not say no to this one. It's like juice. I have I have quite a few uh, certain like styles or profile of orange wine that I really like to drink, and this fits right into that that easygoing wine which I can have morning, afternoon, night. For me, it's not the most complex. It wasn't the most complex wine in the world, but it's just something I I enjoy. Dr I drank I like, drank like three glasses like it was yeah. juice. So you chose this rosé, and you were a little bit scared at first because the lady. Why look at ladybug and I look at ladybug in a vineyard, which is not a good thing. But the color is lovely, it's made from Torriga Nacional, right? 100% Torriga okay. Nacional, a variety that you'll see a lot in port. This is the Sejadinha, I think that's how in Portuguese, uh, Vinho Rose 2019 from around the Lisbon area. Dark color. Torriga Nacional is known for tannins. Uh, color and acidity. So let's give this a, a go, shall we? I personally love darker rosés around the world, even though they're out of fashion. Yeah, I, I like it too. I like all kinds of rosé, actually. I mean, there's a place for every kind of rosé. Any ladybugs on the nose? Nope, but it's quite reductive on the nose, which is fine. I mean, it's rosé. It's in the transparent bottle. You were kind of scared at first of days. So yeah, it's got a lot of like um, wheat fruit, strawberries. It's a little bit spicy, but I really think that you got to give it a little bit of time to open up. There's a little bit of meatiness to this rosé, don't you? You can say that, but to me, it's more like towards the spiciness, yeah, like the savory quality, yeah. Actually, it's, quite, it's complex. It's not, don't think of your, uh, you know, Provencal light colored rose. This is a rose with some complexity, some some body. You want the spitter? It's quite thick on the palate. Yeah, so it's quite, I mean, there's a little bit of, um, this is your sugar as well, you think? I think it's, it's just pretty... Sweet. It's, not, it's not sweet, but it just has a very nice body. I still think it's still quite spicy. Um, you really feel the acidity on the finish. It's got this citrus bite to it. Like, um, more like lime than lemon bite to it. Are you scared of it? Tasting it now? Mm, no, no, no. And it's got a nice tannin. It has this a little bit towards like the tea, black tea kind of tannin, but really subtle. We're not gonna, I'm not going to score in this video. You're just going to have to read our upcoming article uh, about these wines. I have to tell you right now, it, uh, it's exactly what I would expect from a darker colored rosé. A little bit of meat, just a touch of tannin. It's pretty, it, it's, I, I really enjoy it. It's like a, almost like, I don't want to say it's a light red because it has tan, more tannin than a light red, right? And it has more acidity than a light red. But, but you have a point there. I think it kind of is between like what you would expect from rosé and a light red wine because of the body. Do you enjoy this or not? I mean, you really enjoyed this. I would give a final verdict like in a while because I really do think it's quite reductive and I'm not being fair to the wine but I do I think I would say I'm more intrigued by it than like really impressed by it right now because I think this is quite a different style of rosé I need to stop touching this ladybug <laughs> Anyway wait, ladybug Is that, is that the It doesn't even make a noise right? Let's go move on Another Maverick in the Dow This is the Torre de Tavares 2018 Menthia. And this is weird. So he's also like Antonio Madeira up there in the Dow, the Burgundy of Portugal, you know, working with old vines, kind of laissez faire winemaking. The difference here, this is weird. In Portugal, the grape Menthia is called Jayan. So I don't know why he chose Menthia, yeah. but you love the grape, right? Yeah, I love it. Uh, I love it because um, it's got a certain fullness about Menthia and it's got a little bit of this lushness that sometimes reminds me of Merlot as well. Let's give this a go. I love, personally, I love whites and reds from the Dow. I don't think I actually have had one that I've not liked ever. Mm -hmm. So let's give this a go. What are you picking up here? I wonder if it's a little bit carbonic maceration. It does smell like that. Young yeah. wine, fruity, fruity, lush, red plum for me. Mm -hmm. Kind of, uh, I do get some of the- um, I love the banana on the finish, but I like it. I really like this. This, from what I understand, this guy's really laissez-faire. No temperature control, nothing. Just kind of lets the wines just kind of do whatever their own thing. I like it. It's like a fresh basket of different kind of like forest berries. A little bit of this like banana. I wouldn't even say banana. Maybe towards a little bit banana cream, you get a little bit of that quality. Which is nice here, it's really little. But it gives that lives. I love the tannins in here. Mm. It's fruity, but it like grips you a little bit on the finish. Nice wine. Mm. I really like the tannins. The tannins are pretty, a lot more, mm, lot more I, than I would, I would say, expect. I would say it's a little bit astringent, but it's more young and firm than astringent, which makes it refreshing 
structure. I like it. Well, we tasted about three of the port three of these minimal intervention port uh, Portuguese wines. I actually really enjoy this too. By the way, I'm sorry. Uh, I think this is gonna get a pretty good score for me. Whenever it's going to get become more complex. I think now I'm getting a little bit of this stemmy quality. I yeah, I really enjoy it. <laughs> okay, so winner. Mm -hmm. Our friends at uh, Real Portuguese Wine picked these out for us. So you know, according to your guidelines, uh -huh. cleaner wines, not as much VA, uh -huh. no bread. What do you think? Love it, love it. I I think these are exactly the kind of ones, and they're all low alcohol. You know, yes. 12.5. 12.5. These are really just the wines that you can drink a lot of with friends. Are they glug glug wines? I use the word glug glug, but it's like I don't try to do it when I do my reviews because I think it can be a little bit of an insult to the winemakers as well. Like it, it's it's accessible, but at the same time, I think even both the, the rosé and this red has a little bit more quality than that. It has this like nice tannins and structure, yeah. We are affiliates of this of this uh, company, Real mm -hmm. Portuguese Wine. They're shipping all over Europe. You can, you can check out our article and in the description box for a link, you can get the 10 percent off if you order with that link. Uh, the cool thing about minimal intervention Portuguese wines or Portuguese wines in general are the prices are so ridiculous yeah. low. You know especially orange wines, minimal you know natural wines are kind of trending right now. The prices can kind of go through the roof. These are still all fairly priced mm -hmm. right. So on, on that point I think it's also good to try natural Portuguese wine because I think it gives you a very good idea of the true variety expression of a grape. Like you really taste what kind of fruit flavors and all that without without too much makeup on the wine. So do it, do it, do it, do it. All right guys, enjoy. Uh, check out the link. We will see you at the next episode. Oh. <laughs> Hello, thanks for watching. Hey, you made it to the end. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell so you know when new videos are out. If you like content like this, check out our Patreon page where you get some behind the scenes exclusive content. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.